light of Christ that is present with us always. Yeah. I am happy to welcome you to our worship service this morning. It is the end of September already. Next week is Worldwide Communion. So I invite you to come to the service prepared at home to share in the bread and the cup. Have some bread handy and a drink of juice so that we can participate together in Holy Communion. So I welcome you to our worship service this morning and pray that you will find it meaningful. We continue this week with our theme of fear since we continue to live in a time of fear. Let us pray together. Loving God, we come to you with heavy hearts this morning. Our world continues to frighten us. We watch the news in fear as we listen to the numbers of people getting COVID increasing. We sit in judgment of those who do not follow the safety protocols, wishing that they would recognize the dangers as we do. Our fear paralyzes us, O oh God, from doing things we want to do. We are so aware of those who are in fear of wild forest fires, and those of hurricanes that are damaging their homes. We pray that you heal our world, O oh God, that you hear our prayer and answer in your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Activity. 
Last year, he walked to the top, but decided it was too high and that it really wasn't for him, so he went back down to ground level and sat it out. This year, on the night before the treetop exercise was going to happen, he was really nervous and had a difficult time getting to sleep. He made it through the night, though, and the next day took his turn to conquer this challenge. He faced his fear and embraced it and did it anyway. He was no less afraid than last year, but this year he decided to try it and he accomplished the task. I was so proud of him when, he, when I heard that he had overcome his fear. When I asked him how he did it and why he did it this year, he told me that the night before, when he couldn't get to sleep, he prayed that God would give him courage and be with him as he faced the challenge. He was no less afraid, but he trusted God to help him through it, and it worked. Isn't our scripture lesson today reassuring? Rejoice in God always. The Lord is near. Do not worry. The peace of God will guide us. During this time of fear, there is great reassurance in these words taken from the letter to the Philippians. The wonderful thing about scripture is its timelessness. What was true over 2,020 years ago is still true today. How can we know what to do during this pandemic? How can we know what is right and what is wrong? On what can we base our decisions about matters with which we have never been faced before? I believe we have a choice in how to live our lives. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in Jesus and the God of peace will be with you. We have been coming to church most of our lives and learning about scripture. In times of fear and dilemma and catastrophe, people turn to God for guidance. Is that what we are doing now? Or are we seeking counsel elsewhere? Are we praying about what we should do? Or, or are we listening to voices that may not be rooted in faith? God has given us brains to think and to reason but sometimes all we need is a bit of faith, or a whole lot of faith, to guide our actions and decisions. It has been my experience throughout life that all the worry in the world doesn't change a thing. What does change things is when I turn to God and seek counsel there. People are fallible, but God is infallible. We become paralyzed to an action by our fear. What is it we are worrying about? That is the important question to answer. To what are we clinging? Is it our faith or something else? Maybe it is time we began heeding these words of scripture. Rejoice in God always. Let our gentleness be known to everyone. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be known to God. Wow. Let that soak in for a bit. Rejoice in God always. Let us begin by counting our blessings. Let us stop taking everything for granted and let us remember that it is God who has provided for us. I am not discrediting our hard work. We work for what we have, yet God has given us the abilities to work and achieve. Think about your families, your children and grandchildren, and for some, your great children. What a blessing they all are. Scripture goes on to say, do not worry, but, in, but take everything to God in prayer. Let our requests be known to God. So I wonder where God has been for you over the past seven months. Have you felt God's closeness or absence? Have you been feeling thankful or fearful and resentful? Sometimes all we need is a little reminder that God hasn't gone anywhere and that all of our worry accomplishes nothing. What are the ways that we can demonstrate that we still have faith? It is easy to have faith when things are going well, but so much more is required of us to maintain our faith in the tough times. And we are, without a doubt, experiencing tough times this year. Can you name your blessings?
I am grateful that families have drawn closer to one another. I am grateful that they're spending more time together. I'm grateful that life has slowed down somewhat. Parents are not having to take their children to sporting events, throwing supper together and rushing out the door to arrive somewhere on time. I feel that people have become more gentle with one another, recognizing that we have all had to make adjustments in our lives. We are aware that with our masks on, people cannot see the expression on our faces. So we are looking into each other's eyes more to read what they are feeling. It's really quite wonderful. We have been forced to adapt to many changes in the way that we do things. The church is a great example. We have had to be innovative in how to reach out to one another. Our communication has improved as we receive regular newsletters informing us about what is going on. We are providing virtual worship services, which we have never done before. Acting out of fear gets us nowhere. We need to be wise, be kind with one another, and trust more in God. We have to pray more and rely on our faith. Take a leap of faith and turn to God for guidance. Be thankful and express our thanks. Thanks be to God.
us repeat the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now as we end our service, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. May the sun shine warm upon your face. And until we meet again, may God hold you.